Pes, this is this is Luis from the SDK team. Uh, can you see my presentation? Yes. Yeah, yeah perfect. All right, um, so I'm going to talk about the SDK instantiation. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, I mean, I'm going to give some theory, but then we are going to start with the, with the first exercise. So this will be mainly a, a, practical, a practical session. Um, so the first thing that I want to talk about is the D2 class. Uh, this is the entry point uh, to access the SDK. And it is required to perform any operation involved with the uh, DHS server or the local database that we have in the in the device. To be able to use it, uh, we have to deal with the class D2 manager. Um, uh, using the D2 manager, we will configure an instance an instance HD2. And this will also ensure that D2 is a single a singleton across the application. So the first thing that we have to do um, is to configure it. Uh, for that, uh, we have in the SDK one class, which is called D2 configuration. And there we can configure uh, some parameters that we will be using in the, in the application using the SDK. Um, so as you can see, um, this is already an extraction of, uh, of uh, Java code. Um, we are using um, auto, auto value for our classes, but I don't think this is very relevant. The important thing is that we are using a builder uh, construction here to be able to add all the parameters uh, to the configuration. So the first thing that we have to do is to call the, the builder and then we can start passing um, all the parameters that we want to configure before instantiation the SDK. Uh, the first one and the only mandatory one that we use is the context. Uh, which is uh, an Android class uh, that will uh, grant us access to the device resources, like the file system, be able to create the database, etc. Um, then we can also give uh, an app name and an app version, and this is used uh, for uh, the, the, the this is sent to the DHS to server for analytics. And this, like we said, uh, it's already um, sorry, it's um, it's optional. And then we have some other more uh, more optional parameters like timeouts and some of the things that uh, we will not be covering, uh, but we can refer to the to the documentations to to get the whole list of, of configuration uh, parameters. I'm not going to go too much into detail, uh, but we uh, for methods that take quite a long time uh, in the SDK we always provide two different versions of the methods. One is the blocking way, and the other one is the reactive way using the library Reactive Java. Um, you will always see that in some parts, uh, we have methods calling like I call, are called like instantiate 2 and then you will see that in the same class, we have something which has the, which has the same name, accept the, sec the same parameters, uh, but has the blocking word uh, before. Um, it's up to you uh, to decide which one you use in your applications. Um, in general, I would say that uh, the ones using the reactive way um, are more conscious about uh, that this code should be using another thread um, and will help us in the development of, of the of the Android application. Um, you have to always take into consideration that you cannot access, for example, the um, the network using the main thread. Um, so if you are using the blocking, um, if you're using the blocking construction, you will have to uh, make sure that you run this code in a in a secondary thread. Okay. Um, so before we start with the exercises, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we are going to do this. Um, so the strategy that we're going to follow is uh, that we will have a main facilitator for each exercise. Um, in this case, I will be the main facilitator of the first one. Um, so the, this main facilitator will explain the exercise and then we, you will be moved to a breakout room with a smaller number of students and at least one facilitator that will help you to, to solve the, this exercise. And how are we going to, to uh, solve these exercises. 
The first thing we have to do is to update your Git repository. I'm going to enumerate the whole things that we, the list of things that we have to do, and then I will go uh, in detail uh, for, for, for each point. But the first thing we have to do is to update the, the Git repository to make sure that we have the, la the latest version um, downloaded uh, from GitHub. Uh, you have to create a new branch starting from the exercise branch. So you, so you will see that there is this in the repository, there is, a, there is a branch for each exercise. Then in Android Studio, you will have uh, below, there is a to-do tab. And we everything that you have to do, it's marked with a to-do. So uh, you will, it will be the way uh, for us to guide you to the, to the points where you have to add some code. Once you finish, you can make a comment and save it. And this comment will be just for you. So this won't be evaluated in any way from, from us. If you are not, if you don't manage to finish the exercises, you can uh, still come to the Q&A session uh, for extra support. Okay, um, so I will show you how to do one of these things, each of these things uh, using Git and Android Studio. Um, and then I will explain the exercise. And if you don't manage, uh, you will also get some support uh, in your uh, break room for the, for, from, from your facilitators. So the first thing we have to do is to uh, update the Git repository. Uh, for that, we have to go to the top menu in Android Studio, uh, click on uh, version control system, PCS, and then find the option update project. Uh, then there are two different ones, merge or rebase. We can uh, leave merge, which is the default, and click on OK. And then all the new data will be uh, pulled from, from GitHub. The second thing we have to do is to create a new branch. Uh, for that, on the uh, bottom right uh, in Android Studio, you will see the branch you, where you are. Probably you're in a master branch or in the US, use cases branch. Uh, if you click on there, uh, there will be a menu that pops uh, up from the, from the right bottom, uh, showing the whole list of branches. Um, then you can see that if you have, uh, you can first see your local branches, then you can see your remote branches, which are the branches that you haven't, that there are on GitHub, but you still haven't used them offline. Um, so you will see that there's a long list of branches with the prefix origin academy. And you, you, you have to find the ones that have the prefix 2021 uh, three online, which is the academy that we, we have right now. And then you will see um, the, the, the different exercises. Uh, once you find your exercise, you have to click on this branch. You click on new branch from selected, and then you have to give a name. Uh, this name is uh, just for you. So you can give, for example, exercise one. Don't worry if you don't get all this directly, uh, we will, we will, you will get support in the, in the breakout room. Um, so the first thing we have to do once we are in the branch of the exercise uh, is to go to this to do tab uh, on the bottom left. And there uh, you will find a list of to do's. Uh, normally per exercise, there's only one or maximum two to do's. Um, you will see that there maybe if you just if you're just in the project, um, you will see uh, two packages. The, the second package that has 30, 36 items is from the SDK, internal from the SDK, so you don't have to, to care about it. You just care about the, the first block, uh, which has the Android skeleton app on it. And finally, once you're, once you're done, you can uh, make a comment to save your changes. So make sure uh, you have it for, for, for the future and you can have a clean state for, for the next exercise. So for that, you can click on the menu on the top on BCS, click on Comet, and then you will see the, the files that you have changed. You can uh, give a commit message and then save it and then you're, you're done. All right, so uh, enough explanations. Uh, we can start coding.